It is Tuesday, time for our e-blast. So Pastor Joe is here to share that with you. Uh, great week, great weekend. Uh, man, we had our marriage retreat. Been doing it almost ever since the church was open. And uh, around 28, 30 couples was uh, for Delta variant still going on in the area and all the fear concerning that. It was still an incredible and amazing turnout for our marriage retreat. Uh, folks from married, uh, couples from both campuses came together. That fellowship was alone was just a blast. But then the teaching, the ministry times, the, the time where couples just uh, shared in communion together. It was, a, you can't even put it into words, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit. In that moment, there was, such, there was such sweetness in the room, such healing in the room, such grace in the room. It was, it was a magnificent moment. You can just ask anybody that went. That's all the report I'll give you, but it was glorious. And Sunday, come back home. Uh, spring continues to climb in attendance. Uh, Magnolia does as well, so we're having good attendance. People slowly getting back again after this last Delta wave. Listen, it is time to get back to church. Better is one day in the Lord's courts than a thousand elsewhere, so come. Uh, most people have either had COVID or have their vaccines or have immun immunizations to it. So uh, listen, uh, don't live your life in fear. The threat for you uh, is, is very, very minimal. So uh, I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't really believe that with all my heart. Plus, I believe that we can trust the Lord, you know, with our lives on top of that as well. So listen, I want to share a word with you today. A couple of things. One, uh, it is 33 years now. This month marks 33 years that Believer's Fellowship has been in ministry and doing the work that God's called to. Those who've been around for a long time have seen the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the, the struggles, the strifes, the joys, the tears, the floods, the hurricanes, all the other things we've been through. And God still just continues to, to let grace flow and mercy flow. And people are still getting right with God and people are still coming to Christ and people are still being baptized and homes are still being strengthened and lives are still being touched. Forgiveness is still being manifest and mercy still flows. What a great God we serve. We've tasted very little of those kind of things I just mentioned in regard to the church that we are truly a part of as a whole. 2,000 plus years, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has marched triumphant through every kind of pandemic, through every kind of peril, through every kind of crisis, through martyrdom and persecution, and even today with all that going on, in places in the world that most of us think, well, if, the, if, it, if, it, if it costs that much to be a Christian, people wouldn't come. But countries like Iran and China and Cuba, people are still coming to know Christ and still lives are being transformed. Let's keep up with the Holy Spirit's work in the world around today. So don't, don't let this stuff of the world uh, uh, anesthetize you, put you to sleep, harden your heart, cause you to go cold. Stay true to Jesus. Uh, I want to show you just a quick word. This is uh, from a devotional book, one of my favorite devotional books ever by J. Sidlow Baxter. It's called Awake My Heart. He was an Australian theologian, grew up in England, went to Spurgeon School of Theology, wrote many books, uh, taught many seminary classes, just a, a brilliant, I mean, a brilliant man of God who had such a way of putting the deepest things of God in the simplest format. Each page of this devotion book, and I'm not trying to sell, I'm just saying it's worth your investment in time and money. It's like a Bible study in itself. So I use it often for the many years. You can see all the different page markers that I've put in there for just words. And I could really put a page mark on every page. It's so good. But yesterday's devotion, when I was looking at it, was called The Cure for Care. Uh, Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. First Peter 5, 7, we've all read that verse. He says, you know, there's two kinds of care in this text. This, there's the anxious care in the words, casting all your care, all your anxious cares upon him. And there's that affectionate care in the words, he careth for you. Over against all our own anxious cares is our Savior's never failing affectionate care. So understand that God loves you today. He has a work that he's doing in your life. He hasn't abandoned you. He understands where you're at and what you're going through. He knows that you have anxieties. He knows that you have doubts. He knows that you have worries. And he invites you to cast all those things upon him. And it literally means just to lay it there and leave it there. Having done it once for all, don't go back and take it back. Just give it to the Lord, whatever that, whatever that stress is, whatever that anxiety is. Whatever that, that struggle might be. Now, it doesn't mean he will eliminate those things, but he will give us peace. Literally, he, he takes the weight of those things and he puts them on his shoulders. Yes, we have to face them, but we face them with his strength. We face them with his grace. We face them with his victory. So I encourage you, that no matter what your care might be, that you would take those anxious cares and entrust them to God's affectionate care because he does love you. Also, I want to remind you, 
But not only God loves you and you cast your cares upon him, but just to tell you, hey, Sunday we started a series this last Sunday. If you weren't in on it, go back and watch it on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook channel and get caught up because it's going to be four or five, maybe six weeks of just talking about you're the manager. In other words, we are in charge of, of, of life of, of the, that God gives us. We have responsibilities. He's the Lord over it, but we are responsible, you want to use the word managers, for what God wants to do in and with and through our life. So that's a series that uh, help you prioritize, get things in order, to make sure things are in order. Come be a part of what God is doing. It's in his church. The Bible says, now to him be glory throughout all generations, throughout the church and through the church. So God's way of working in the world today is the body of Christ. Don't miss out on what God's doing. Don't stand before him one day and say, well, oh, I just kind of went, went occasionally. Uh, no, there's too much at stake in the world around us that we live in for any of us to sit idly by. God loves you. I love you. Let's cast our cares upon him and let's serve him with joy together in Jesus' name. Say, so I'm attaching the newsletter to this uh, uh, to this e-blast today so you can open it up. It'll be in a PDF format. If you can't open it, you shoot me back an email. Say, so I can't open it up and I'll send it to you in a publisher or word format or something like that, whatever you, you need it in to read it. So just let me know. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday.